All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our second and last best of three series of the day. Double Dimension and just beat out Team Spirit. 2 to 1. So that's brought them here up against Vega Squadron. It's another elimination game. The losers out of the qualifiers. The winner will move on to the single elimination bracket that'll happen tomorrow. My name is Dragon Drop. Happy to be here. Also happy to be joined this time around by the one and only Guac Guac. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you doing? Lots of Dota happening today. Indeed it is. Thanks. Exciting. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, man. I was solo casting and I was reading already <laughs> in that last game, so. Yeah, you know, you. sometimes you just need a little backup when there's a billion games. Oh, yeah. And you just gotta get through them all. But uh, this one's pretty hype. Yeah, should be. I think. Double Dimension. I mean, they uh, they came in strong in this last series. They played very well. They had some good drafts. And Vega Squadron, they're playing with a stand in today. Zayak from MVP Revolution uh, replacing Silent. And uh, they actually released a statement on the website, which is something that uh, is pretty cool. And I would love to have more teams do. And uh, their manager commented on it by saying that uh, they haven't had, uh, they weren't satisfied with the results on Vega Squadron, and they'll try out to, uh, they'll try to refresh the roster in the next couple of days. So they'll play a bit with Zayak, and uh, they'll announce some final roster changes soon. So some interesting stuff going on there. Curious to see how that works out. I mean, it's still pretty early season, so I mean, teams have a little bit of. Flexibility and leeway, I think. Uh, some North American teams had some stand-ins earlier in uh, King's Cup. So I think teams are just figuring out the best possible roster for this season before they officially commit to anything. Because you never really know when you like sign on five people how they're going to perform until they actually start performing. Yeah. So might as well find out now rather than later. Absolutely. Especially, especially now, right? A couple of qualifiers already going on for all of the minors and uh, the uh, Hamburg Major in particular. But there's plenty left to go, so you want to be able to get yourself that uh, that good base, as you said, that good lineup that you're confident in to go forward into the new season. But uh, speaking of confidence and comfort pick heroes, I've seen a few that should seem familiar. Necrophos and Nerfshaker making an appearance, and Nyx Assassin first picked actually by Vegas Squadron. What do you make of that? Um, I think Nyx Assassin is just a really safe hero right now. When you pick it, it doesn't really reveal too much because you could put it off lane, which isn't that common anymore, and you could put it as a position four, but it deals really well with like the Necrophos, who is just so common in like almost every game. You just pop your your mana burn, you pop your spike carapace, and uh, you just make it really annoying for the Necrophos to just be a presence in a fight. Yeah. And, uh, Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't seen a hero picked up by Vega in previous matches, so yeah, maybe it, it is that uh, that reaction to the Necrophos, just find that out as count. I haven't seen it myself. Normally you see the Ancient Apparition or something like that picked up, but this sub, of course, it's been banned out by Double Dimension, knowing that they would go for this Necro pick. So it's curious to see how that works out. It should do fairly well, as you said. And um, they also have the Shadow Shaman who has provided a lot of extra control. And uh, that's also useful to just try and prevent the Necrophos from getting off these spells to burst heal himself up. And uh, you also have that push potential from that hero. Very true. Um, I think both, both drafts don't really reveal too much. Necrophos is very, very flexible. You can see him mid, you can see him safe lane, you can even see him off lane. Earthshaker is just, you know, one of the best supports right now. Roaming even as an offlaner, which isn't as common, but still definitely possible. And if it's a good mid lane matchup, you can even see an Earthshaker mid. So definitely very flexible drafts coming out from both teams. Yep. And now we'll see what else they want to turn this draft into. They already banned the Broodmothers, the biggest squadron. They do not want to get cheesed in a game like this. And, uh, well... Picked up the supports, now they're looking for some cores. And uh, there was the Oyster, really. Ideally, something with a bit of magic damage, perhaps, just to try and uh, go against the Necrophos. Alternatively, someone uh, that right clicks, they'll build a Diffusal Blade to get rid of that Ghost Shroud. Right, apparently, Zayak is uh, pronounced Zayats. Might still be butchering this, but uh, thanks for the notes, Mr. KNSVR. Radiant team in Twitch chat. That's a Nightstalker, alright. Actually, making it through to the second phase. 
took quite a while to settle on it, but that's a hero that uh, shows up quite a lot in Vega Squadron's drafts recently. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would I would say that Nick's Assassin is definitely more viable as a position three than a Night Stalker, but even you know, in the past you've seen a offlane Night Stalker, very tanky hero, could regen. Um, but you do kind of want to leave lane once the first night comes to go make stuff happen around the map. So that leads me to think that Nyx is definitely the core here. Yep. But who knows? This is Dota 2 and anything can work. Could be mid Shadow Shaman for all we know, but Oracle, okay. Alright, I'm going to make a bold prediction here. What do you think the chances of us seeing a Huskar here are? Ooh. Oh man. Making me all excited. Could very well be a Huskar, yeah, for sure, why not? I see, because Stumble Dimension banned out the Ancient Apparition earlier, because he counters the Necrophos pretty hard. But I was just thinking to myself, like, well, the Ancient Apparition is out of the pool, and uh, seems like Vega's heroes are all pretty bad against Tuscar. Seems like a pretty fair pick. Um, and it's also pretty okay with the Necrophos. You kind of scythe someone while Huskar is hitting them, and they just yeah. kind of die. Life break just puts your health pretty low. Easy to get finished off by the scythe. I can definitely see that. It's something that can definitely sneak up on you in Vega Squadron. They probably have uh, the same thing in mind. Right now they don't really have the best answers to a hero like that, especially with the Oracle also in the field. So at this point where you already have to consider, alright, what hero do we pick that is potentially strong against that? So again, something with a lot of physical damage. And, uh, hmm. Options are there. Perhaps uh, Sona can also jump on anybody that Shadow Shaman shackles up, so Phantom Assassin, perhaps? A little bit Maybe. out there, Ursa. Clinks, okay. It works. I was thinking Clinks. I like Clinks against Huskar, and I also think Clinks is really strong with the Shadow Shaman. You just have Shadow Shaman hold you down, Clinks just pops some arrows into you, and you're toast. Yep. Yeah. Also frees up the Night Stalker much Ten more in, this, uh, in the safe lane. So Shadow Very Shaman true. is all that you need to babysit that hero for a little bit until he can uh, stand on his own. Yeah. Now double dimension. Do you still want to commit for the Huska or do they find, find something else? The Viper, alright. I mean, Equally it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. It's not too late for the Huska. Um, I'm assuming okay. this Viper is mid. I don't think the safe line Viper is very good. Yeah. Um, now, now, as Vega. When you when you look at a Viper and you get to choose your mid lane hero because uh, they've already revealed it, what do you what do you want to pick into a Viper? What makes you not scared and not upset as a mid laner to sort of not get dominated and also able to get good farm without you know getting every creep denied or your tower pushed in by a rogue Viper hero? I'm not mm -hmm. sure such a hero exists. To be quite honest. Um, earlier actually Team Spirit, they did quite well with a Pugna up against Viper. I was pretty surprised about but there was... The level 1 Keycrap sort of ruined yeah. his level 1, and then... Yeah. So the only that's... slightly uh, annoying thing is the fact that when you Nether Blast, you sometimes hit the Viper when you don't want to, and you just take some of that corrosive skin damage. Yeah. You're definitely extremely vulnerable uh, as a Pugna too, like Earthshaker. If he roams in at the right time, just... When the Pagna is inside the river, easy fissure block and Ten stuff like that. And remaining. the Cropify can do so much to help you out. Mm -hmm. So, I'm Five not sure Vega Squad is going to go back for that. It would also leave them very squishy in general. Yeah, it's pretty all in if you pick yeah. a Pagna. Like, you have the next for initiation, and the rest of your team is pretty much a Night Stalker and three heroes that are really good at pushing. Yeah. Um, Pagna is good against the Necrophos, though. Maybe. I could go maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think they'd rather just go for one of the classic mobile mids. It can uh, kind of uh, that has long range. It can kind of stay away from the viper. Yeah, Pack would have been a good one. Green of Pain is still in the pool. Would be the other option. Yeah, they. Uh, Double Dimension doesn't have the best lockdown for a Queen of Pain. You have Fissure. You have Instant Sun from Echo Slam, and you have a Scythe. But Oracle can't really do much to hold you down. Besides the root and Viper, just. Bites and auto attacks. Yep. Five seconds remaining. Well, we'll find out soon. They don't have too much reserve time left. Double dimension. They're also still looking for a carry hero. Alice. Oh, or an offlaner. They have some flexibility in their draft as well, right? Necrophos. Probably gonna be the one position, but uh, 
again. It's going to be a very flexible draft here. You can pick up Let's another go. support, another four position if they want to run the Earthshaker as a as an offlane, but it's also less Monkey common these days. Monkey. Ooh, Monkey is, King. All right. Monkey King doesn't even reveal too much because I mean it's not as popular as it was in the past, where the four Monkey King was pretty much the only Monkey King. No. But uh, I think it's still possible. Yeah, but the Carry Monkey King is probably the better bet. Yeah. So and they played it earlier today in their last series, mm -hmm. and there was Rajix picking it up as a carry. And Viper was picking up, was also playing under, <coughs> was also being played by Undershock in mid earlier, so that seems to be the most normal way to go about it. Question becomes now whether they can go aggressive, whether they can threaten the Klinks. Okay. I can, kinda like that. Monkey King's still sort of a melee hero, so that static link will be good against him. And it's one of these heroes that's also. Uh, can hold his own against a, a Viper in mid, I think. Especially if Go Boots first. Yeah. Um, I never really thought about it, but I think Monkey King has some pretty good synergy with Oracle. Um, you just kind of, in the, early, in the early lane, you just kind of hit them and Oracle roots them. And then later on, you get ulted and then you regen with your passive and you live and you can't get saved. So. Yeah. Not too bad. You can keep your ultimate going. I mean, sometimes Monkey King can just be bursted down fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, especially if like if he's in a bit of trouble, pops the ultimate. Then I was about to be, be right click down. If Oracle is in the vicinity, obviously, throwing out that... Uh, to call the false promise up onto Rajix, that'll be prevented. Very true. I think Monkey King is pretty underrated. I know a lot of teams have really been picking it, but I think like the true potential hasn't been fully mastered yet. It's just like very, very good at early levels, doesn't need too many items, um, can end the game pretty quickly. And just the being able to sort of be off the map to threaten is just really, really strong for any core. Yeah. Well, it's... And I'm still a little bit iffy about uh, like where he's fitting in. He's being played as a core more often than not these days. But when he was first launched, he was uh, this four position hero, right? This hero that just kills three dance level one and just jumps around, uh, just looking for someone to slow. But that's been nerfed. The playstyle has been nerfed a little bit. Just with his slow on the uh, on the jump down and uh, the vision nerfs as well. The thing that's been a contributing factor to him being played more as a carry hero these days. Okay, we'll see what they can do. He he's a courier right now. So, <laughs> that's the other thing. And he'll be able to... Uh, we'll see how much he'll be able to do this game. Right. Bigger Squadron versus Double Dimension. Game number one of this best of three. The winner will move on uh, to uh, the single elimination. And they will survive in, uh, this is in these PGLCS qualifiers for one more day at least. The loser will be out. It's as simple as that. My name is Dragon Job. I'm joined by Quack Quack. And, uh, yeah. How are these lanes looking? This is gonna be an aggro lane. I wonder if Afterlife Nerds is a tree just walked past him. <laughs> it's kind of blind, this small little Nokia that he's found himself. Yeah, the other benefit about a safe lane Monkey King is he doesn't really need too much help, especially if he's against a solo offlane. We got some action top. Uh, just running right at each other. Flow or dropping super super low, but so is the Shadow Shaman. Fairy Fires come out, and it is LeBron. Barely gets the first blood here. Him and No Fear still chunking away at the real you also known as a lower dance. And really committing for the skill. No Fear with another Fissure. Yeah, they'll get it. Damn. It's not even possible. They don't even have a lot of right click damage. People oh, forget. Still lose one of the heroes, but still. I think people forget about Oracle's very base attack time. His damage was reduced, but he can hit you a lot. Yeah. Really put in a hurt. I just got two kills off of it, so. I <laughs> got some boots and the TP. Flow. Still under threat. He is uh, the Night Stalker. Made his way back. Only with the Death Pulse, you don't have that burst heal. You need Ghost Shroud, and that's not going to be for a while. Up until level 4 for most Necrophos. Uh, for most Necrophos players. 
the uh, No Fear Earthshaker item build is the true value, I'm sure. Four clarities and boots. Regen unnecessary. Oh, they're gonna go on flow. It's a crime of rhyme. I'm sorry. But Slayer. Vega Slayer. Oh. There it is. Do you want a Slayer? That void coming off cooldown. Alright. Pretty explosive dodge here already in the top lane. How's mid looking? He should be starting to dominate this soon, shouldn't he? Oh, so far he's... Uh, at least every single time the staggering comes off cooldown, I'm sure he's forced to walk back. He doesn't have the boots yet. He doesn't have, doesn't have them either. He's still slightly faster than the Viper for now. Top lane. Guess it'll change in favor of the double dimension once Flo gets a couple of extra levels, but then in try lane it's gonna be hard. Invisibility. I feel like the Necro first really doesn't want to be in a try lane. You, you get so much value out of levels, and when you're level one with just a death pulse, there's not really much you can do. Yeah. I mean, you get the bonus regen for kills and for denies and creeps and stuff, but uh, you really want at least. At least level three, I think, before you're just of any value. Ooh, mid lane. This will only hurt Poor Viper, he's not really used to that. Walked up to the other side and Slayer, with the rotation, slowing him down long enough and got a crazy amount of damage onto G and then the static, the plasma field is enough to bring him down. Didn't put a single point up into the grosser skin just yet, so he only has a 25% base magic resist. Top lane, okay. Fights go on, Zayak, or Zayats. Uh, locking someone down, not quite enough to get the kill, but they will find it on LeBron instead as he sacrifices himself for the cause. And there's very little punching power here as it turns out on uh, on the side of DD if they're starting off the fight with so much damage being done. Interesting. Blow went for um, a Heartstopper or instead of a level 1 Ghost Shroud. Which I guess is somewhat value, but just being able to like pop your shroud and pop your stick and get all your health back is just yep. so fight turning. Yeah, this is kind of the standard build. You go like uh, death pulls, hot stopper, death pulls, and then go shroud. But that's normally for necrophos that are in the safe lane that isn't being as fought over as this lane is right there. So I would definitely like to see go shroud level two as well. But, well, we'll see if he gets punished for it. Right now, no fear. Gets another fish out. He took the wrong path here to intercept no fear, so he should be fine. But hey, look at this afterlife. Ultimate rotation here. Body blocks for Undershock. Four heroes. <laughs> Casual four hero gang. This is where you. This is the ban in the game if it's a pub. Or my mid GG or something like that. Earthshaker is thinking to himself, wow, I, sh I didn't die, but he led them right <laughs> to his core and then. Feels bad. I like this early rotation from the Nyx Assassin. Getting his levels down in the bottom. Uh, there's not a whole lot that Roger can do about that alone, but. It feel? Oh. It's what it is. Middle lane, they're gonna go again. G. Took a lot of damage away from somebody. And the uh, top lane, well, low left alone. He just dies. Necrophos is having a difficult game. Clink's just. Massacres this type, these types of lanes where he can just sit back and plunk arrows into his enemies. Any sort of response that they that double dimension can muster? I mean, obviously fighting didn't quite work. So at some point you try and just put Rajix up top and give Flo some levels down bottom. I think once Monkey King gets his ult, I'm not sure if you skip it or not, but I think once he's you know got a certain level of farm or levels. You just have to go off the map and try and get a kill. Um, and he's maxing his tree dance first, so maybe that's what he's thinking as well. Yeah. There's a lot of variance in Monkey King's items, uh, uh, skill builds. So I'm maxing out a tree dance, but I know Neff has a has a carry player that uh, likes to just max out the jingle mastery as well as the bamboo strike. Uh, okay, up top lane, they're gonna go again. The shackles. Necroforce can't even get off the ghost shroud until just in the nick of time, healing himself up. 
getting some extra health from number one, so this time he barely survives, but damn. The only power from the clinks. Yes. Oh, Zayats, caught by no fear. He's level three, so a little bit of extra damage. No, Undershark oh. actually found a haste rune, so that's a free kill. Might be another one if they have detection for clinks. Uh, doesn't look like it. He's just keeping out I, anyway. Doesn't want to take the risk. But yeah, there's there's a lot of variants on Monkey King's builds. So the merits of Jingo Mastery maxed is uh, that life steal in conjunction with the bonus strike. So if you fuel up the Jingo Mastery and then you use bonus strike on Greedo, you just heal up the full health instantly. But right now, no fear. Being tracked down, another slow will be available soon, but hey, the turnaround is there, Rajax makes the appearance, they lose the hero. And, well, they get a trade on maybe two flow, not level 6, far from it, but I'll have to try and track down Slayer the old-fashioned way, he's trying to deny himself to the creep stack, but the damage will catch up with him. And Rajax with the right rotation at the right time, now bottom lane is empty. So I'll have to take that over, in the meantime, what the hell, okay. Ron just Clinks dies just, to... What? Clinks just runs up, shoots an arrow, <laughs> gets a kill. Just Clinks things, you know. <laughs> Orc only has two armor. Feels pretty... Yeah. Feels pretty good. Oh, yeah. I think uh, that Monkey King rotation was just game-saving. Just being able to get two kills right there. Shut yeah. down G a little bit. He was getting a little out of control, I think, but uh, definitely, definitely not out of reach. Yeah. Power treads on Monkey King. Okay. Interesting. Uh, more right clicks, I guess. More right clicks, more health, more armor. Yeah. I mean, I don't think damage is really an issue Monkey King has to worry about too much, as long as you get your hits in. Also needs the stats. Yeah, he's that's zero, so, squishy. so crucial. He has zero armor. Oh, G in mid. He's in miss. From he's that waiting room. for the gank to show up and they converge mid. Yeah, after yeah, life coming from one side. Three in miss heroes, like Undershock, is not gonna know what hit him. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he is not having a fun game right now. No fear with the reaction. A little bit too late. After life with a spike carapace. Knowing that there could be some sort of fissure or something coming his way. <laughs> LeBron immediately buys and drops sentry wards in base. Like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, this middle lane is an absolute disaster. The top lane is also didn't quite work out. The only thing that's really going well for Double Dimension is this Monkey King. And yeah, give them this one, uh, one fight turn around, but he needs to continue this. Continue having an impact here on this game to just give Undershock a chance to catch up. Both him and the Necrophos, really. Klinx is running through the jungle, looking for a hero. The Nyx Assassin standing on the high ground. Uh, it's just gonna wait until Zoltman comes back. That will defect one of the big creeps. He's gonna eat that big Seder, probably. Yep, yeah. here he goes. And he's off. Again. Oh, oh They see this coming, though. There's Ooh. the fissure. No fear. He was waiting for that. Where's the extra follow-up? They get the stun onto Klings, follow-up there from Rajax as he jumps in, gets stunned by Spike Carapace, and the follow-up from Afterlife, but they're still super, super slow because they're also caught on the shock. Final strike will come out, they'll lose their Nyx Assassin. Will they find more? Well, doesn't look like it. The rest of Vega came to the aid of the Klings. That Carapace would have saved the Klings, yeah. and also the stun. Well played, even though Nyx Assassin does end up dying. Good play though for Double Dimension, they, they knew that Undershark was a target, so Nofia just waiting patiently inside the trees to be able to react. Then the instant TP from Rajix too, so... Undershark just tells the support player, please sit mid, they're gonna kill me again, I need help. Oh, Zayats. Uh, turns around for a shackle, afterlife ready to turn around, same for Klings, but nice little fissure gives Rajix a fighting chance, he needs to have one more hit to stack up the lifesteal, but he can't hit afterlife. The lens are falling. 
Four heroes, now five coming in for Vega Squadron. Double Dimension still want to take this fight. Under Shock, he's not really in fighting shape. The Shackles coming out on Earth Shack. He will fall flow. Well, gets the Scythe up. No kill, though. Only level one. Not doing enough damage in this. Oh, so starting from bad to worse. Under Shock, next one on the list. Vega Squadron. Decisive victory here in this bottom lane. It was so close to, though. It wasn't for the Spike Carapace. Monkey would have been able to hit something, heal himself up. And make some more plays happen as it stands. Might lose the tower. Rajik's still sticking around though. And more TP's coming in. In the middle of that though, it's okay. They see him now, they're jumping straight in the back here onto Klings, but no detection at the right, and now the stun taking away a lot of the damage from Monkey King. The Serpent Ward's now being committed from Zayat. The shackles, they just burn down LeBron. Now uh, they finally call it. All right, let this tower go. LeBron really needs his tome. He needs his ultimate. Yeah. He has that ultimate that that turns fights for the Monkey King or the Necrophos. I wonder how much region you get when you pop Ghost Shroud and you're ulted by Oracle. Seventy-five percent from the Ghost Shroud, double from the Oracle. Ult. Oh yeah, that's a lot of that's... that's a lot of value right there. It's a lot of damage that the Klings would have to do to offset that, that's for damn sure. Now Vega, they're just to turn nighttime as well. There, was, there wasn't even them at their best in this bottom bottom fight. They just have so much momentum yeah, coming through from these lanes. Klings as well as the Razor, it's getting so strong right now. Klings going straight for the Medallion Deso, doesn't even think he needs the Diffusal Blade. Who needs a feudal if you have uh, two heroes that set up kills, regardless of what, uh, <laughs> regardless of the target? Don't give up, he says. Oh, chat wheel. <laughs> Rest yeah. in peace, chat wheel. I still have it. <laughs> Not the true chat wheel. That is, that is fraudulent chat wheel. Cool man's chat wheel. Silence up on Monkey King. He's actually in a bit of trouble. We used there, so is G. Gonna have to try and play his way out of this, but well, I'm able to do so. I think it was used somewhere else. LeBron tried to ache, tried to come to his aid, but took the wrong path. Went through the river of death. <laughs> yeah, this is this game's falling apart fast for double dimension. Yeah, is there anything stopping Vega right now from taking down all the tier ones in, during this night time? Not really, or uh, I would say if Earthshaker had an ultimate, there would be a chance for him to turn a fight, some kind of massive Echo Slammer and a Creep Wave, but uh, he, everyone is just really, really not just poor on gold and poor on levels. Yeah. Like if you look at the uh, the Night Stalker in comparison to the Earthshaker, it's just Ooh. level 9 versus level 4. Well, Slayer, he sees what's going on in his middle lane, they just let the wards finish off the towers, the Yets. Also, he's saved by the silence of the Rajik. He's the only threat right now on the side of Double Dimension, but it's uh, a threat that they can handle. Meanwhile, in the back, yeah, <laughs> and just intercepting the reinforcements once again. Double Dimension, the supply lines aren't safe. Play too many strategy games. Oh no! <laughs> oh, they find the tree, they cut it! Afterlife with the place. Either him or. Yeah, must have the, been him. The uh, Invisible Hero Brigade, it just converges. <laughs> yeah. And uh, ends people. Don't have another set of serpent wards here for another push. They can just burn through the tier one regardless. Fifteen minutes in, nine kill gold lead. Ugh. They need to just put all of their spells into one hero and scythe them, and then focus on getting a little farm on some of their heroes. They want to turn this game. Probably the clinks they need to dump everything into, or the razor. I think No Fear just dies here, though. Oh! Nice this arm, actually, but it's not gonna be long enough to get the last couple of right clicks in, but might long be, be long enough to set up for a kill. Doesn't actually have a creep eaten, so not all that tanky. That's a great one to get. Big spree. Going in the hands of Undershock. Oh, that's a, that's a large, a lot of gold. Yeah. I wonder if you just, like, buy a Midas right now as Viper. Because <laughs> if you just go for a Dragonlance, 
I don't think you can get back in the game off of that item. I feel like this, if the only way double dimension wins this is if it goes late. Yep. Clinks kind of falls off. Um, I don't know how well Monkey King scales, but it just seems like right now it's just yeah. pretty much all their tier ones are up. Everyone is poor. Is Earthshaker half his ult yet? Earthshaker is still level five. This is hard game. Yeah, I agree. It's would have been perhaps a way to go. At the same time, Undershard, he's he's the one type of hero that's also not necessarily scaling particularly well into the late game. That being said, though, I have seen some Vipers pull out crazy shit. Uh, like past the 60 minute mark, so don't underestimate that the strength of that hero these days, but... Yeah. At the same time, it's also a hero that they need to rely on to be able to be in the middle of the fights and to buy them the time to get there in the first place, so having your Dragonlance will help him. Uh, be in a bit of better position. You can sort of see how scared a double dimension are moving around the map. Yep. Earthshaker's basically hugging his tier 3. Necrophos is just hitting the ancient camp. <laughs> and the three heroes top are just... Turn things oh. around here, LeBron, with the uh, with the ultimate on Undershark. They turn things around on Clinks. Project's also got his ultimate off and... Well, signs of yeah, life there on the side of DD. I left this blinks away. I get the clinks again though, which is definitely good. Something that they have to be wary of, just being overconfident after life. I think he just picked up the blink dagger too, so there was the reveal on that. Ended up going for a target that's still reasonably tanky in his own right. And uh, had that instant support next to the shrine. Same time though, G the very least. Yeah, G is still farming doing all of that, so he's the benefactor of all that space. But, um, yeah. This is Klinks dying twice. I mean, he's actually lost gold. He was at 7k net worth a moment ago, so... How much is this going to hurt them in the long run if that happens again? Um, I think it's pretty bad. I think as this is happening, they put Earthshaker bot up to farm his blink. Because they know this is the way they get back into the game off of a blink initiation. Because right now they have to wait for Vega to go on them before they can do anything. They don't really have any way of starting a fight on their own terms. Um, but, uh, Vegas sort of recognizes this, that they shouldn't keep going for, you know, towers and kills. They can just go back for the rush, yeah. and there's nothing Double Dimension do to contest, really. Monkey King Ultimate's on cooldown. Scythe's not, but, uh, can't really start that fight without a Blink Dagger. Yeah. Using all the spells that they have. Including the Mass Open Walls, also have, have a Ghost with them. Oh yeah, Helm of Drum Knight actually on Night Stalker. What do you think about that item? Because uh, it's been a while we've seen it on every core, especially. But um, nowadays, uh, heroes don't really fit it in too much. I think the Helm of Dominator is like a really undervalued item. Uh, definitely, I think, falls in the similar line as like a, a drummer of lads. Like an item that just makes your team better, allows you to control a creep. Gives your team an aura. Uh, just not. I don't think it's very good on cores anymore because it kind of prevents you from getting an item that you want to get faster. It just is like an in-between item, I think. But especially yep. with the clinks, uh, Night Stalker could just run around with the snack, and the clinks can just eat it without having to run to a creep camp or something. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Especially with the clinks on the field, yeah. But yeah, and also the Klings, he's kind of doing all the minus armor stuff. It has the medallion now on top of the Desolator, and this is this would be like the other intermediary option for Night Stalkers that they'd normally go for. So, yeah, he has the Doom and his other builds for it. That's a lot of value, as I said. Now, Aegis in hand, they'll be able to just stage down the top lane, I guess. Raise if you're larger in charge, the max net worth almost setting the 10k line. Has the Sanj, will be turning that into a Halberd before long. Halberd, very good against Monkey King. Uh, typical high ground already here, 20 minutes in. No fear, still no blink, far away from it, they drop down the Serpent Wards. And uh, they Mark can hit it from low <laughs> Dealing with the Serpent Wards. Have to range, Rajix. Okay, 
It's double damage, but a lot of his that is actually being taken away still. Now double damage actually expired, so he's hitting like a like a peanut, like a pea shooter. Well, that's what I'm th thinking about. It was like a sizable amount of damage here to the tier three. Now they have to respond, so the other lane's pushing in. Earthshaker eats the tome. He's almost at his blink. Um, I think what they want to do is sort of stand behind this Viper and then wait for them to go on the Viper and then turn the fight based off that. Oh. Will that be successful though? It could be. Um, it sort of depends on how out of position they become and how good the Fissure is. Yeah. And if uh, Monkey King doesn't die here. Oh god. Oh. Well, that's uh, that was wishful thinking. Four heroes converging on him. Make that happen. Good Slayer able to silence the Oracle to prevent the the ultimate going out to save the Monkey King. Oh, nice. Very aware play right there. <laughs> he has enough money now for the sun, uh, for the halberd. It'll be completed soon. Oh man, it's just. It's such a strong timing just in the back of this hero alone. Not to mention the crazy amount of damage the Kling still provides. It's the amount of lockdown that they have. It is nighttime here, courtesy of, uh, of that ultimate. I don't even think they have to worry about the split push all that much. But they're still uh, responding Flo to this. Flow dies here, I'm sure, or close to it. He could have carapace that. We'll see. I think he's waiting for backup before he. Oh, he's gonna the TP. Wow. Flo didn't realize that uh, he was there because this death bolt actually went to the hero. But there it is. The Echo Slam only on one. There is on the Shadow Shaman. The open ones have already been out, but half farm. There it is. The ultimate from Rajix as well with the extra help from the False Promise. But a well, little timeout. It's still oh, very, very low on health. G is committing for it. He has the Aegis, so he doesn't care. Brings him down. He does a buyback, but doesn't want to throw it out just yet. There it is. They have to. They have to throw everything they got now onto Vega if they want was to prevent the Saigon push. Looks like that threat will be enough with the wards expiring as well. Finish up the tier 3 so they got what they came for after utilizing that the Aegis are trying to open up. After life cancelling, the uh, Necrofest's TP was fight winning, I think. Yep. Necrofest being there means he can just scythe someone who with low health, take him out of the fight, and uh, maybe Monkey King wouldn't have died. Let's take a fight oh, here. Monkey. No fear. Gets Carapace in the middle of that afterlife. Well, he gets rooted. And he's trying to make his way out of there. <laughs> yeah. That's so value, though. Blinking and Carapacing the whole team. Yeah. Die for it, but uh, keep your cores alive, which is what's important. Yeah. Actually, now bigger. the Aegis has expired. Biggest movements are so efficient, too. I mean, Zayat's already pushing down mid, bottom lane. He's making his way there, the rest of the team found the raid in jungle, so it's, they're not wasting any time still. Just keep rolling. Bottom shrine is dead, top shrine not quite. So that's still an access point for the next Roche, which uh, will not respawn for a while. Monkey King's economy was really hurt by that buyback. He really needs a BKB. Um, but he's going for a solar crest. I guess that's all right. They have a lot of physical damage. Yeah. But uh, a BKB just seems. So it might be a little out of reach. Maybe that's why he's not going for it. Yeah. Need items really fast that are somewhat combat effective. And yeah, as you said, solar crest not the worst. With what, with what you can afford, it's probably the right choice. Yeah. Still smoked up arm trying to catch somebody, but uh, that's he does have his own blink dagger, so. He, Got out of range of that really fast. Still sticking around though, afterlife especially. Been doing a lot of good work already on this next assassin, just setting up kills after kills. Necrophos still hasn't recovered from his early game. I mean, in some games, uh, Necrophos will just scythe the right target and be able to like fully regenerate, get back into the game. But uh, his net worth is just pretty, pretty underwhelming. Not a lot of Necrophos can do from behind like this. Got the Blade Mill Radiance queued up. Maybe the Blade Mill will be able to turn some fights. Oh, there we go. 
Double stun there from Nyx Assassin as he gets going on. Roderick's in the middle of that too. And they keep him live with the uh, with the Glimmer Cave. And now the reinforcements come through. Nyx Assassin still ends up falling in exchange for LeBron. The Echo Slam here. Catching both. Finally a Scythe here. Bring, bring down the Shadow Shower. And oh, what cost? It still loses the fight. Four for two. And it's not even over yet. Undershark. Last man standing. Trying to make his way back out. And he has no mobility left. Went for the Halbert here just to prevent the Reclix from the Clings. But G is still there. It'll be a full five men wipe. A Vega squadron. They don't have serpent wards. What they do have is a lot of power from the clinks. They'll claim that Rax. Forcing out two more buybacks. And all well, this stick and run for range for a little bit. Hopefully they won't pay for that for that uh Hopefully they can for that commitment. Pick up someone. God. Otherwise bought back two. Maybe I mean they saved if they did buy back, we would have gotten double racks for sure. So I guess those buybacks were valuable. But uh, they really would have preferred to just pick off someone who was running away. That would have helped a lot to stem, stem the tide of the game. Yeah, at this point, it's, uh, it's getting to this area where it's statistically highly unlikely that they win. Because it's already 20k advantage for Vega Squadron in terms of net worth. Like they, they hold all the cards. Roshan, it's a long respawn, so that'll... It's something that works in, <coughs> in DD's favor now at the very least, and there we go. Just breaks the smoke time. They realize they have to make something happen. Echo Slam is off cooldown, so they won't be able to rely on that. They do have the Monkey King ultimate. On Maybe cooldown, they'll get you yeah. here. That would be great. Uh, that's, that's pretty good fish initiation here. They'll find Shadow Charm for sure. G does have another Hurricane Pike in the second being slowed down by the Monkey King ult with the Echo Saber hits, but... Not gonna be too hard on it, we're fearing the uh, retaliation. Instead, against the Montaigne Slayer in the middle of that, and uh, they actually find another fissure onto G. Long range initiation, but the Link taking away all of the Monkey King's damage. Have to refocus the here. Afterlife on the side. She isolates himself from the rest of the team. Same for Slayer. I don't know, but yeah, bottom lane, okay. <laughs> This is all with purpose. Base created, BKB used, one, two, three, another one would have been needed, but yeah, you opt for the TP out as more reinforcements come in. Scythe is expended in the fight top, but uh, Winx <laughs> was winning the real fight. The fight against the buildings. Yeah, we will end the shark last man in front lines. And hey, Rajax coming back in, fall out there with Boundless Strikes, Slayer, Echo Slam coming back, locking him down further. Yeah, I was curious why, uh, like why they would still stick around on the side of Vega in this, in this area and still fight. But yeah, form tier three. That answers that question. Space created, Guac. I think space created. Uh, Necrophos holding a gem, which is really good. I think if they five man, they have a much better chance of winning fights. So just being able to know when they're getting gone on by two Invis Heroes will definitely be able to help them a lot. Doesn't Night Stalker doesn't have Ags. I actually haven't seen an Ags on a Night Stalker in a while. Maybe it's not value anymore? Uh, Hunter and Night gives it a flying vision anyway, and that's the only reason to pick yeah, it up. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. So unless there's like a Nick success on the enemy team, we have to have like... Um, Ags gem to just scout that out reliably. It's oh, like smoke on smoke over. action. Oh. DD, oh no, the pause! <laughs> DD, they didn't see Vega Squadron yet, I don't think. Unless they smoked under the water, I don't think so. So, Vega Squadron, they do know about um, Double Dimension on that once they were paused. So, very unfortunate timing. Alright, let's look at the spells that are on and off cooldown for each team. We have no Echo Slam. We have no Scythe for 6 seconds. We have no False Promise for 32 seconds. The big one, I think. Anyone with Vegas Squadron jumps on, they won't be able to save him. Uh, Death Pact's up. It's off. It's on cooldown, but uh, hit, hit the buff is still active. Um, Alright, here we go. Oh. Oh, that is. I'm the shark gets linked up, hexed up, Rajak sitting on a tree, dropping down that ultimate, the scythe comes through onto the Nyx Assassin. That's a big control factor down. Rajak's trying to fight, but he won't be able to survive. Two for two trade. Once again, LeBron, next one on the list, the swat down easily. 
I'll just wait out to go shot from Flo. Good fissure there from Nofia. Trying their best to keep him alive, but... Oh, huh? four stuff forward. Nofia giving his own life for his carry. Four heroes are down. Roshan is back up. And they call it GG. No way they survive any sort of push with or without Aegis. That was the last ditch effort. Last hurrah. Good game for the biggest squad, and proving once again that uh, uh, they, are, they are a force to be reckoned with, even without Silent. I was checking things up a little bit, and Dayat on the Shadow Shaman doing some, some good work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that Double Dimension sort of had difficulty with their draft. Their draft looked okay. I think you needed to put the Necro safe lane in a more traditional offlane or offlane because the, having the Necro shut down like that in the early game really set the tone for the rest of the match. He just yep. wasn't able to to do anything really. Oh, yeah. He had some okay scythes towards the end, but just not what you run out of a Necrophos. Yeah, it's not the type of Necrophos that we're used to seeing that just uh, just runs over people and being such a nuisance. But as didn't really feel his impact. Undershock also got the gang time and time again in mid, so he couldn't really do anything on the Viper, and that's also a hero that needs to be ahead. Can't really play easily from behind. Thinks is uh, just like the aggro Trilan hero, I think. You know, he doesn't really yeah. get some value out of levels, but those arrows are really all he needs. You know, you just need to be plunking away, doing some damage, not dying, and uh, that's all. That's what Clinks is the master of. Yep. Alright, and with that. Bigger squadron will set themselves up quite nicely to uh, perhaps punch the ticket to the single elimination stage of these qualifiers. One more win is all that separates them. And Guac, your typing is coming through loud and clear. Yes, it is very loud. <laughs> I will, I will not type. But uh, yeah, I thought that game was okay. I think Double Dimension has what it takes to to win a game too. Um, there were some good plays in that game. Rajex definitely looked really good on the Monkey King. Yep. Just the draft didn't favor him, I think. LeBron and Nofi were just really underleveled. Didn't get the blink when they wanted it, weren't able to win some mid-game fights, and that was it. Well, worth, worth remembering that they did lose uh, the first game against Team Spirit as well, and they bounced back 2-1. and one. We'll see whether they can repeat that feat in game number two coming up in just a couple of minutes, so don't go too far away.